Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Sukkah Daf Mem Gimel focuses on the mitzvah of Lulav and the mitzvah of Arava. Why they push away Shabbos, meaning you bring them even on Shabbos, one of the days of Sukkot. We've seen in our Mishnah that when uh, Shabbos falls out on the first day of Yom Tov, the mitzvah of Lulav pushes away Shabbos, and you do do the mitzvah of Lulav. The Gemara is going to want to know, first of all, what does it push away? And second of all, why is it only one day? And some other machloks that are relevant to that question. Then the second half of the daf will discuss the mitzvah of Arava. The Gemara will want to know which day does Arava push away Shabbos, if Shabbos falls on which day of Yom Tov. Why? Then we will have a, some uh, questions and discussion on that. So first of all, as far as the mitzvah of lulav, we've seen that the halacha is is that lulav is da'iraisa in the base hamigdash all seven days of Sukkot. Outside the base hamigdash, it's da'iraisa only the first day of Sukkot. Nevertheless, the halacha was that in the time that the base hamigdash was standing, the mitzvah of lulav could be done on Shabbos if Shabbos fell on the first day of Yom Tov. If it fell on a later day of Yom Tov, you did not do lulav on Shabbos, even in the base hamigdash, even when it was derais in the base hamigdash, you did not do lulav there. Now, in our days, we don't take lulav at all on Shabbos, and we're going to explore that as well. So, first of all, the Gemara wants to know if you do do the mitzvah of lulav on Shabbos when it's Shabbos falls on the first day, how come you don't do it in the base hamigdash where it's derais, and when it falls on a later day? So the Mercy says the reason is that we are afraid that somebody will carry his love in Rosh Hashanah in order to ask a question from a Talmud Chacham about how to shake it or how to say the bracha or maybe to ask a Shaila and whether it's a kosher or not. And therefore he will come to violate a mitzvah's asay of Shabbos, a mitzvah of kores of Shabbos. And therefore we said not to take it the rest of the days. So the Gemara says that is also the reason that we don't blow Shafer on Shabbos, and it's also the reason that we do not read the Megillah when Purim falls on Shabbos. The Gemara says if that's such an important concern, so then even when Shabbos falls on the first day of Yom Tov, you still should not take the Lulav even on the first day like we do t- today. So the Gemara says, well, we already said in our Mishnah that when Lulav, when the when Shabbos fell on the first day of Yom Tov, we told everybody to take the Lulav at home. So they didn't have to bring it to the base of Mikdash. They didn't leave the house with it, so there's no problem. Someone says, yeah, but that was a Takana that was instituted at some point when they, when, when, when we saw the problems were happening, um, that the crush of people trying to reach the Lulav were causing injuries. But that's um, before that Takana, people were taking it in the base of Mikdash, and we allowed them to take it the first day. Why are we making zero bar? And we're afraid that people are going to come to carry it. So the Gemara answers, well, the reason is because the first day of Yom Tov is very important. The first day is a mitzvah der Isa, even in the rest of Eretz Yisrael, not just in the base of English. Therefore, it has a special higher level, therefore we allowed it on Shabbos. The other six days, even though they're der Isa in the base of English, since they're not der Isa anywhere else, they're considered to be a lower level. So he says, well, that's true, so then even today, we don't have the base of English anymore. The first day of Sukkot is still a higher level. We should be allowed to take the mitzvah. We should be allowed to do lulav even on Shabbos, because it's such a high level. We, uh, we allow we uh, we are allowed to do it on Shabbos. So Gemara says the problem is is that we are not familiar with when exactly is the day of the first day of Yom Tov. We have a Sveika de Yema in our days. Since we don't know which day it is, we're not going to go and do it on Shabbos. It might not be the first day of Yom Tov, really. Uh, since we're not sure what it is, therefore, we don't do it. So the worst is, if that's the case, then in Eretz Yisrael, where they don't have Sveika de Yoma, because they never had Sveika de Yoma, they never had any doubt as to which day was Rosh Chodesh, and therefore they never had any doubt as to which it was Yom Tov, they should take the Lulav even on the first day of Yom Tov. So the Gemara says, you're right, that's true. Now the Gemara's going to change this all the way at the end of the Taf, but for now, the Gemara says, that's true. In Eretz Yisrael, today, we, they, they do do the mitzvah of Lulav even on Shabbos when it falls on the first day of Yom Tov, and outside of Eretz Yisrael, they do not. The Gemara says we can even prove it because we have a contradictory Brisa and Mishnah. Our Mishnah, in the beginning of this parakeet, said they all came to the Beis Hamikdash, and they all put their uh, lulavim there. And then we have a Brisa at the end of the last parak that says that they all went to Shul and put their lulavim there. Well, which is it? Did they go to the Beis Hamikdash or did they go to Shul? And this is both of these are referring to when the first day of Yom Tov fell out on Shabbos. So the Gemara says it must be. The one is referring to when the base of English was standing. One is referring to when the base of English was destroyed. When the base of English was standing, they went to the base of English. When the base of English was destroyed, they went to Shul. 
Therefore, we see clearly that both when there was a base of Megdash and there was no base of Megdash, the Lulav was taken on Shabbos. So you see that in Eretz Yisrael, even today, the Lulav is taken on Shabbos when Shabbos falls on the first day of Yom Tov. The Gemara now asks for the source of the Halacha, that the Mitzvah Lulav is Daraisa on the first day of Yom Tov, all around Eretz Yisrael. Where do you see that from? So the Gemara explains the word of the Pasuk, L'kachdam Chambayam Arishon, word by word. L'kachdam, the Gemara says, the Gemara quotes a Brisa, L'kachdam, that everybody needs to take their own lulav. It cannot be one person taking it on behalf of everyone. L'chem, it has to belong to you. It can't be borrowed or stolen. B'yayim, it has to be the day. That means even on the day of Shabbos, you still have a mitzvah to take it. Now, Rishon without the hay, that teaches you that even all around Eretz Yisrael there's a mitzvah, not just in the Beis HaMikdash, because it doesn't say in the Beis HaMikdash, it just says Rishon, Rishon, wherever it is. HaRishon, the first day, that teaches that uh, only the first day of Yom Tov, the special day of Yom Tov, that's where there is a mitzvah of taking it even on Shabbos. So the, again, the word Biyom, HaRishon, says that you take it on Shabbos, but only when Shabbos is the first day of Yom Tov. That is the source of this halacha. Now the Gemara asks, why do I need a Pasuk to tell me that you could take the Lulav on the first day when it falls on Shabbos? What would be the Isser exactly? What's the problem? The only potential problem with the Lulav is that it's just a branch, so it's Mukta. But there's no Isser Deiraisa. And the Pasuk can't be teaching me that you're allowed to violate an Isser Darbanan. So the Gemara answers, Rav says, this is not talking about doing the mitzvah of Lulav, holding Lulav itself. It's talking about some steps that you have to do in advance, some preparatory steps to taking the mitzvah of Lulav, like cutting it off the tree and tying it together with the Hadas and Arava. Those are two potentially Surah Daraisa. And this is according to the opinion of a certain Atana, uh, which is Rabbi Eliezer, who says that these things, push away Shabbos, you're allowed to do these things even on Shabbos on the first day of Yom Tov. And Gemara now gets into this Machlokas more deeply by quoting the Brisa. Rabbi Eliezer says you're allowed to do these Malachas on Shabbos to so prepare for the Mitzvah of Yom Tov, and the Rabbanan say you are not allowed to. Where does Rabbi Eliezer know this Halacha from? Like we said, Bayayim, comes the word Bayayim, on the day, even on Shabbos, you're allowed to do these things. So what did the Rabbanan do with the word Bayayim? That's the teacher, there's only a Mitzvah of Lulav during the day, there's no Mitzvah at night. How does Rabbi Eliezer know that Halacha? Because later in the Pasuk says, Usmachnam, Lufnei Hashem, Kechem, Shivas Yamim, Usmachnam is referring to the Lulav and Asterig. And it's telling you you should do it Shavas Yamim during the days. Why didn't Rabbanan learn from that word Yamim? You might say, well, the word Yamim appears by Sukkah also. And as far as the Sukkah is concerned, it says, with Shavas Yamim, and there Yamim means the day and the night. So don't tell me that the word Yamim by Lulav means the day and not the night. I don't know what it means. By Sukkah means the day and the night. Here, it could also mean the day and the night. Now the Gemara says, well, how do you know that by Sukkah means the day and the night? Yamim. So Gemara quotes a Brisa. This brisa, interestingly, is assuming already that you already know that lulav is only during the day and not during the night. And it wants to know, what should I do with the word sukkis? What should I do with sukkis? Sukkis, it says yamim. Lulav, it says yamim. And the shevis yamim and luim, there was a halacha that the kahana were not allowed to leave the mishkan. Now the question was, they were not allowed to leave the mishkan by day or even by night. So there the halachos are not allowed to leave the mishkan during the day or the night. So I have word, the word yamim three times. By lulav it means just by day. By shevet zimim it means by day and by night. The question is, where it appears by sukkah, what does it mean then? Is it more like lulav and therefore it's only by day? Or is it more like shevet zimim and it's only by night? So the Gemara says, well, it's in a sense comparable to each of them. It's more similar to the miluim. Um, in the fact that it's something which took place the entire day, the mitzvah of sukkah, you had the whole day. It wasn't a one time per day mitzvah. You didn't have to do the mitzvah once a day. It was something which every time, you, the entire day, you have to be there. So then I could understand that just like Shavu Simei Milum extended into the night, so could also extend into the night. On the other hand, it's more similar to Lulav, because Lulav is a mitzvah that occurs generation after generation for all time, just like sukkahs. The mitzvah of not leaving the Mishkan, the Shavu Simei Milum occurred once in history. So Gemara says, I don't know, what should I compare the sukkah to? So Gemara says, well, there's another word. The word teshu appears in discussing sukkah, but sukkah is teshu, shevaz yamim. And it also appears in discussing the shevaz yimei milum. There it also says a teshu. Therefore, uh, we would learn, we would compare sukkah to the shevaz yimei milum, and that is the source that sukkah, the word yamim by sukkah means the day 
and the night, and you have to, the mitzvah of Sukkah applies both by day and by night. Now, this concludes the Gemara's analysis of the mitzvah of Lulav on Shabbos. Now we get to the mitzvah of Arav on Shabbos. So what's the mitzvah of Arav on Shabbos? In the base of English, they took Aravos each of the seven days of Sukkot. The Gemara is not clear what they did with it. The Gemara will say that there's a question as to whether they held it in their hands, and that was the mitzvah, and they walked around the Mizbech with it, or they just leaned it against the Mizbech. That'll be a machok because it comes up later. But now the Gemara uh, relates to the fact that in our Mishnah we said that one day of Sukkot, um, the mitzvah of Arava pushes away Shabbos. So which day is that? So the Gemara says it's the seventh day. It's what we call Hashanah Rabbah. When Hashanah Rabbah falls on a Shabbos, then we can do the mitzvah of Arava in the base of English again, of course, on Shabbos. If it falls any other day of Sukkot, we will not. Otherwise, what's the reason? Why does it push away Shabbos if it falls on the seventh day of Sukkot? So Gemara says that the Rabbanon made a special rule that it should push away Shabbos in order to show that it's a mitzvah of the rights that people didn't realize that the mitzvah of the Rava was a Darais, that the Torah does not explicitly say anywhere to take the Arava in the base Hamikdash. And if we wanted to make it clear that it's a mitzvah of the so we wanted one day, uh, one day of Sukkot at least, it should be that Allah is that you can do it even on Shabbos. So Gemara says if that's true, then we should also make the mitzvah of Lulav push away uh, Shabbos um, every day of Sukkot. It's not enough that it uh, pushes away one day. That it pushes away one day doesn't help me. That I see from the Sukkim, but that the mitzvah of Lulav itself, I want to show that it's a mitzvah da'iraisa, that we need to show that it's a mitzvah da'iraisa in the base of Migdash. That it's a mitzvah da'iraisa altogether, that it says straight out in the Sukkim. The fact that you take it all seven days in the base of Migdash, people didn't realize that was a mitzvah da'iraisa. So at least one of those other six days besides the first day, the mitzvah of Lulav in the Beis HaMikdash should push away Shabbos be, in order that we should be able to publicize the fact that it's a mitzvah der Isa and not something that Chazal brought up. So Gemara says, no, we didn't want to do that because, again, like we said we had, like we said earlier, we had Xer, we're afraid people can end up carrying it. Gemara says, well, Arava, they might also carry the Arava, you have the same concern. Gemara says, no, Arava was brought by Basin. The Basin sent people to bring the Aravas to the Beis HaMikdash. Those people are his reason, they're very careful, they're not going to uh, carry it on Shabbos out on the street by mistake. Lo of everybody took their own, and therefore we are afraid that the mistakes will happen, and we did not allow it to be brought any of the other days of uh, Sukkot that fell on Shabbos, except for the first day. Okay, now the Gemara says, if you're really so confident that the Shluchet Bezin are not going to violate any Yisurim, so then let the uh, let Arava be brought when Shabbos falls any day of Sukkot. Why is it only when Shabbos falls on the seventh day? They're not going to make any problems anyways. There's nothing to be afraid of. No, the problem then would be is then that the mitzvah of Lulav would look very bad. Lulav only pushes away Shabbos one day of Sukkot, and Arava pushes away Shabbos seven days of Sukkot. It would uh, it would look bad, and people would be mezalzel in the mitzvah of Lulav. Therefore, we did not want that to happen, and we could not make it be more than one day. The Gemara says, okay, I'll accept that it's one day. Um, but why the seventh day? Why shouldn't it be the first day? Just like Lulav. Because if it be the first day, then it will not achieve the purpose of showing that it's a mitzvah of Daraisa. People will think, oh, you know why you take the Arava and the Beis Migdash even on Shabbos? Not because it's a mitzvah of Daraisa. Because Shabbos is already pushed away by Lulav on the first day. So therefore, it's pushed away by Arava also. So we had to pick a different day. So the says, the says, why the last day? Pick any of the other days. And the says, no, we wanted a special day. The first day is a special day. The last day is a special day. The in-between days are just kind of in-between days. So the says, okay, if all this is true, so then today's days, Bizman we don't have a Beis HaMikdash, so we should also do the Mitzvah of Arava even on Shabbos. Just like we have a Zecher for Arava, we should do a Zecher for Arava, and we should do it um, even on Shabbos. We should be able to uh, do the mitzvah of Hashanah, what we call, even if it falls on the seventh day. Why do we uh, only? Why do we not do Hashanah Rabbah if it falls on Shabbos? If the seventh day falls on Shabbos. Now, in our days, with the calendar we have, Hashanah Rabbah can never fall on Shabbos. Gemara will bring that up shortly. But the Gemara here is asking the question that if Hashanah Rabbah fell on Shabbos, we should be able to do the mitzvah of Hashanah Rabbah. So the Gemara answers like we said earlier, we don't know. We have Sveik the Yoma. We don't know that it's for sure the day of Hashanah Rabbah, and therefore we cannot 
do it. So Mara asked the same thing earlier, if so. So then in Eretz Yisrael, when there's no Beis HaMikdash, and they don't have Sveik Yom, they should be able to do it on Shabbos. So Gemara says two answers. First of all, Bar Hadaya came and he said the calendar is set up in such a way that Hashanah Rabbi never falls on Shabbos. Now Ravin and a whole bunch of other people came with him. He said, no, it does fall on Shabbos and it does not push away Shabbos. If Hashanah Rabbi falls on Shabbos, you cannot do the mitzvah of a rabba, even in Eretz Yisrael. So Gemara says, so back to the question, why not? So the Gemara wants to offer and say that there is actually no mitzvah of Arava when there's no base of Migdash. The whole mitzvah of Arava, and this gets into the issue of what exactly was the mitzvah of Arava. So the Gemara quotes of Yesu, who says the whole mitzvah of Arava was just putting it against the Mizbech. Once the base of Migdash is destroyed and there's no Mizbech anymore, there is no mitzvah. So there's nothing for us to do, and that's why there is nothing that happens today, even in Eretz Yisrael. Now Abaya says... Well, hold on a second, not so fast. He's saying the whole mitzvah of Arava was just leaning against the Mizbech. They didn't take it in their hands, walk around with it. Nehemiah is going to attack this now at length. Abai says, first of all, look at our Mishnah. The Mishnah compares the mitzvah of Lulav and the mitzvah of Arava. It says both of them can be done six days of the Yantav of Sukkot. And sometimes when Shabbos falls on a specific day, even seven days. That sounds like they're both the same mitzvah. They're both really the same type of thing. That we're putting two of them together. So therefore, just like the mitzvah of Lulav is to take the Lulav and hold it in your hand, then the mitzvah of Arava is also taking it and holding it in your hand. And therefore, we could do it bismana zeh, and it should push off Shabbos in Eretz Yisrael if it falls on the seventh day of the month of Sukkot. So the Gemara says that Rav Yosef was not impressed. He said, no, they, they're mentioned together in the Mishnah, but the two different mitzvahs, Lulav was held in the hand, and a Rav was put against him as Bech. Abaya attacks again. Abaya says you have a Brisa, and it says as follows: Every day they walked around the Mizbeach once, and on that day, this just sounds like it's referring to Hashanah, but they walked around the Mizbeach seven times. So that there you clearly see they walked around the Mizbeach with it. They didn't just lean it against the Mizbeach. So Rav Yosef answers, and he says that's not talking about walking around holding the Aravos. It's talking about walking around holding the Lulav. That's what they did seven times on Hashanah Rabba, like we do today in Shul. So. Abai asked, but Rav Nachman, bar, Rav Nachman said in the name of Rabbi Bar Avua that they walked around holding the Arava. So he said, Rav Yosef answered, he says they were holding the Arava. I say they were holding the Lulav. And now the Gemara quotes a list of people and how they hold here. Rabbi Eliezer says they held the Lulav. Rav Shmuel Bar Nassim said in the name of Rav Chani they held the Arava. Rav Nachman said in the name of Rabbi Bar Avua that they held the Arava. And um, Rav Yitzchak, uh, Rava said to Rav Yitzchak, the son, Araba, Bar, Bar, Chana, Bar, Avira, Bar, Urya. Come, I'll tell you something great that I heard about your father, from your father. He said on this b'risa that every day they walked around the Mizbeach once, and on the last day of circus on that day, at least, they walked around seven times. Your father said, name of Rabbi Elazar, they were holding the Lulav. So we see here a big machlokas, whether they're holding the lul of the arava, and uh, as a tangential to that, we also have a machlokas, what exactly they did with the arava, did they hold it and walk around with it, or did they only um, lean it against the mizbech? So, Abai continues his attacks, and he brings a b'risa, and he says that uh, the b'risa says as follows, the mitzvah of lul pushes away Shabbos on the first day of Yom Tif, and arava pushes away Shabbos on the last day of Yom Tif. Um, if the last day of Yom Tif falls on the Shabbos, there was once that it happened, the Bryce says, where the last day of Yom Tif fell on the Shabbos, and in order to prepare, they brought bundles and piles of Arava plants before Shabbos and left them in the Azara in order to be able to use them for the mitzvah the next day. But a bunch of Tzadukim got wind of it, and they came and they took them away, and they put them under a pile of rocks. And they knew that the Chachamim would not move away rocks, because rocks are Muktza. But a bunch of Amaratzim came and saw, and they were on the side of the Chachamim, and they didn't know the Allah, that the rocks cannot be moved, and that, and that they are Muktza. So they pushed these Aravas out from under the rocks, and the Chachamim came, and so they were already out. They allowed the Kahanim to go put them next to the Mizbech. Now the Mishnah concludes, this Brisa concludes, and says the reason that Tzadukim did this is because they do not hold that the procedure of the Arava waving and the banging and all that, they don't hold that that pushes away Shabbos. So you see clearly that there is an activity, there is a waving and a banging, and that's what they didn't hold up. The Gemara says, yes, there was an activity. This rejects of Yosef's claim that there was no activity, which just leaned against him as a Be'ach. And the Gemara says, therefore, we're back to our Kasha. Why don't they do that in Eretz Yisrael even today? It should push away Shabbos, and you should be allowed to do it even today. And the Gemara answers, the reason that they cannot do it in Eretz Yisrael is because we don't do it in Chutzlaretz. We don't want it to look like there's two religions going on over here. We can't do it in Chutzlaretz, therefore, they don't do it in Eretz Yisrael also. The Gemara says, well, hold on a second. We said earlier that taking the Lulav is split halacha. In Chutz La'aretz, they don't take it, the lulav, when 
Shabbos falls on the first day of Yom Tif, but in Eretz Yisrael they do. The says we're retracting that. We're moving away from that. In Eretz Yisrael, they also don't take the mitzvah. They don't take lulav. Today, the Beis HaMikdash has been destroyed. They don't take it even when the first day of Yom Tif falls on Shabbos, when Shabbos is the first day. The Mishra says, we had a contradiction between two prizes. One said that they took it to Shul, and one said they took it to the Beis HaMikdash. And we wanted to say one was before the uh, Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, one was after. And you see clearly, both before and after the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, people took the Lulav on Shabbos, if it was the first day. So we'll, say, we'll give you a different answer. One is talking, they're both talking about when the Beis HaMikdash was standing, and it was the only time that anybody took the Lulav on Shabbos. One is talking about in Yerushalayim, where they came to the Beis HaMikdash. One is talking about the rest of Eretz Yisrael, where they just went to Shul, they didn't have access to the Beis Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.